Welcome to Robinson Foundry. My name is Seth Robinson, and in this video, I'm going to go through the process of sand casting an ancient bronze sickle sword. The first step in casting this sword was to make a pattern. I drew the shape of the sword onto some pieces of paper and then cut it out. I then taped the paper cutout onto a piece of hardwood and then traced around it. I used a bandsaw to cut out the rough shape and then sanded down the edges so that they were perfectly smooth. The handle on this sword will have raised edges for a wooden inlay, so after I was done sanding the pattern, I scanned it and imported the picture into Fusion 360. This way, I was able to use the image as a template to create 3D models of the raised edges, which I then 3D printed. One side of the handle can be glued in place, however I needed the other side of the handle to be removable so that the pattern could lay perfectly flat when it came time to make the mold. So I drilled holes around the edges and glued in some tiny brass pins. I used some putty to fill in the tiny gaps, sanded the pattern down one last time, and then gave it a few coats of spray paint to finish it up. Pattern making like this is a large part of metal casting. Many times, making the pattern takes just as long, if not longer, than making the casting itself. The next step is to make a mold out of sand. For this mold, I used a sand called Petrobond. It's made of a very fine grained silica sand, bentone clay, and an oil binder. Now you can see why I made one side of the handles on this pattern removable.
This sword was cast in bronze, consisting of 88% copper and 12% tin. This alloy is very similar to what was used during the Bronze Age to make similar swords. I poured the bronze into the mold when it reached a temperature of about 2200 degrees Fahrenheit to ensure that the metal would flow all the way to the end of the mold. After letting the mold cool for a few minutes, I opened it up to see how the casting turned out. This casting turned out very well, with only a few very minor imperfections. After cutting off the excess metal, I went to work cleaning it up. The first step was to grind away excess metal from the handle so that I could start fitting in some wooden inlays. I then scanned both sides of the handle and imported the images into Fusion 360 so that I could accurately trace an outline for the inlays. Then I used my laser cutter cut out the inlays out of a piece of black walnut. At this point, the pieces of wood were close, but still needed to be sanded down until they fit perfectly inside the handle. At this point, all that was left to do was a whole lot of finish work, which consisted of mostly filing and sanding.
final step was to glue the walnut inlays in place, and the sword was finished. This project was a lot of work and took a long time to complete, but it was well worth the effort. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and if you did, give it a thumbs up, tell me what you think in the comments, and subscribe for future projects. Thanks for watching.